is going on everybody welcome welcome to tonight's live stream uh this is a this is a pre-game so to speak because um if you uh if you've taken a look at uh, my channel here recently you'll notice that uh, wow, we are super duper close to uh, 80,000. It actually came so quickly in the last few days. I had a video planned where I was going to like, you know, hype up this live stream that I thought was going to come in a few weeks. And I realized, oh my gosh, it, it, we're, we're barely there. So um, I have some stuff that I'm going to be giving away, some, some pretty awesome stuff um i'm gonna i'm gonna hint at it right now and let you guys know that uh what's coming is what what, what i'm gonna give away is a small knife collection um and uh, this is you know i like to do this if you're new to my channel i like to do live giveaway events it's not tonight but it'll be next weekend um i have a small knife collection that uh um is has a value of a little over thirteen hundred dollars um that i'm going to be giving away and two of the knives are um exceedingly difficult to get right now um but uh there are multiple items one person's going to win it but um this is something that i like to do um about every ten thousand or so and uh, this one in particular i'm pretty excited about um, so I'm hoping that you all will, number one, join me tonight because I've got a whole bunch of stuff I want to talk about and I'm really excited about it, but I'm hoping you all will join me next weekend, um, Saturday actually, uh, at the same time as tonight. That'll be seven o'clock central standard time or eight o'clock Eastern standard time. If that's, if I'm thinking correctly. Um, but yeah, that'll be, I'm going to make that a big event. Um, I've got some killer stuff to give away and I will reveal it. Actually, you'll get a video next week of me showing off exactly what I'm going to be giving away. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. A few of the things are things that were given, but, um, one of the items I sought out and snatched it up real quick before they were all gone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty excited. I, uh, I, I like, I, I like saying thank you, um, to the people who have supported me by doing awesome giveaways. And I always try to include at least one really cool, like hard to get knife. So, uh, pretty pumped and everybody will be able to, uh, enter not just, you know, not just patrons, not just channel members or anything like that. If you are watching and you are subscribed, you'll be able to enter. What is up everybody? Um, let's see here. Let me take a look at the chat. Um, nice looking Herman. Yeah. The first time, this is the first time I've ever handled it. This is the, uh, the new, one of the newest models, the Herman Ovium. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one for sure. Um, very, very Hermany. um, you know, very similar to other designs. Um, but, uh, it definitely has its own unique flair. And of course the singing blade. Oh, it didn't do it that time. Hang on. There we go. Can you hear it? <laughs> uh, they all. I, I love that Herman's all sing. Just a testament to the consistency there. Um, let's see here. Uh, the uh, actually, let's see. This is a <laughs> this freaking thing. You're gonna see it on Box Smart. This is a brown LHCX. Wow. <laughs> this is it. Listen. The color on this thing, you, there is no justice being done on camera. This thing is, this entire area right here, all the way to here, is, is a detent ramp. And then you see it right there. It's over the top. Then we just turn her. Ah, there we go. Holy moly. Yeah. Wow. That is super cool. Man. Brown knives. Uh, second time I've been thoroughly impressed by them. Uh, let's see. Can you enter if you're in Australia? Yes. But as per usual, uh, I have to be able to ship to a U.S. address, like a CONUS address first. And I know that not everybody has, you know, somebody they know or trust, uh, in the knife community that has a U.S. or a CONUS shipping address, but that is how I have to do things, especially now that there's so much traffic and YouTube is definitely aware of my channel and 
has had a magnifying glass on it for a bit um, with those two demonetization uh, issues. Um, yeah, it, I just, it has to be. Um, so, yes, anybody can enter and win. I have to have a Kona shipping address to ship to first and then however that person gets it to someone else, uh, uh, you know, that's up to them. Um, let's see here. Lame no name knives. I don't know. I don't know what he's referring to. <laughs> Cold Pizza says, "Lame no name knives." Maybe he's mad that I don't have any Gerbers out here. <laughs> um, Lucas Golden MC can't stay tonight, but wanted to pop in and say hello. I'll catch the replay. All right, cool, man. Thanks for popping in. Uh, the the main event will be next weekend again. Eighty thousand. We're celebrating eighty thousand. This is we're just kicking back, relaxing. We're just having a few Gatorades tonight. Um, but. Uh, the main event is going to be next weekend, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, next Saturday. It's going to be a big deal, for sure. Um, let's see here. The CKF, which one? The Sakosha? Yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> With a uh, Zerkatai clip. For some reason, a lot of people think these scales are aluminum. They are not. It's because it looks so microtechy. Uh, these are titanium, bronzed titanium scales. Um, and then we have some carbon fiber uh, inserts there or inlays. Um, Herman, uh, Herman is my grail. <laughs> now, and I blame you, MC. You know what you did. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, you know, a lot of, there, there are a lot of channels that have discovered Herman knives and are helping, you know, you know, bring, shed light on Bartosz Herman and um, his uh, uh, amazing work. Um, but, uh, you can't blame me without blaming Nick Shabazz because Nick Shabazz was, I think the first, like the first person to be like, holy crap, these are really good. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of Nick, you, a lot of you will be happy to know that Nick popped in for another episode of the knife guy tomorrow, an hour and 10 minutes of Nick and I talking about everything under the sun. So that was a, a really good time. I love, I love it when he wants to do this well when i when i ask him and he says yes i love it it's great um let's see here when will the malibus be back in stock i don't know um but hopefully soon and i i would be willing to bet we'll see a small burst of the um sapphire blue dlc which is actually a pvd coating um but that'd be cool brandon renout says i just found your channel and i've been binging so much that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I know what that feels like because I still I still binge a lot of knife content. Jordan Taylor, thanks for the donation. Hey, MC, love all the content as always. Thoughts on the textured handle Malibu? I know it's coming out right now at some retailers. Oh, really? Uh, the ones that I've seen, like Protex Knurling, is excellent. Um, that's all I know. When they do the knurling on the titanium, that that's the best. Like their aluminum knurling is really good, but the tit I don't know, the titanium just feels it just feels better. Any info on the new CKF slash Resenti snafu? Is there another new one? They had to they just recently did a 3.0. Is there another one? How about Rick Hinder Knives Project X? Yeah. I was uh um, alongside Screaming Pirate, I was the first one on YouTube, um, outside of Rick Hinder, of course, to show that. I have an unboxing of the, um, the Project X. Front flipper far right is the um, CKF Fief 20, uh, CKF and Felipe Georges Fief 20. This is a special edition in uh, Zerkatai or Zerkatai bolsters. Very cool. Definitely one of the best front fl flippers that exists. Um, my, uh, next acquisition is coming up and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I purchased a doozy of a knife. What, definitely one of my more, um, I mean, it's not, it's not the most I've ever spent on a knife, but it, it was a lot. Um, it was, it was a lot. I'm very excited. It, it'll be coming soon. Um, let's see here. Dur, 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 dur. I'm going backwards to see if I ever got any more details on a previous comment. No, dang it. I was hoping that they would, 
I was hoping they would take the bait. Dang it. Anyways, um, does that mean another knife sale? Sell? No. <laughs> Usually when I buy something, that's what this this was budgeted for. <laughs> This was this was money saved. This was not a rash like, oh crap, I need to make up for it. No, I budgeted for it. So and everything that I would, you know, like I'm giving away a lot of the stuff that I had built up, you know, that sometimes goes into a knife sale. But next uh for for eighty thousand, for the eighty thousand celebration, I'll be giving away a ton of really cool things. And one person's gonna win it. One person won a small knife collection. What's up? Uh, Kyle Roberts, how you doing? Uh, CJRB RIA or CRKT CEO? I like the RIA better. The CEO is okay. It's just a little bit too skinny and weird. Um, the RIA just has a better grind for like day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and the, C the, the CEO's blade is too skinny, so it has an awkward grind. So I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um... Yeah, I have no complaints. <laughs> life is life is pretty good. Uh, so I'm hoping you're all doing well, uh, of course. Um, but um, yeah, I uh, I have no complaints. I I can't believe the channel's still growing at the same pace that it had. Like I I remember getting the first time getting to this pace, and thinking there there's no way that this is sustainable. There's no way this is insane. And that was like a year and a half ago. It's been at the same pace for a year and a half. So 80,000, what the heck? Where did the time go? Jeff Tang, uh, thanks so much for the donation. I appreciate that. It says try again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scott, actually, Scott is responsible for my next. Uh, don't tell anybody, Scott. You know what I'm, you and I were just talking about, just saying, because I, I had to double check with you. Um, but uh, Scott knows what my next purchase is, and he made me aware of it, and I'm extremely excited. So, let's see here. Uh, going to my first Blade show in Fort Worth, Texas. I really hope uh, to get a Kaneson. I've never heard. Of, have not heard of them. Have you? Have I ever handled one? No, I have not, Kevin. I have not. Jeff Tang, what's up? You sound so much like another YouTuber. Z reviews. He does audio gear reviews. I have people tell me every day that I sound like someone else. Um, Tom Hanks is probably one of the most. <laughs> I get uh, Tom Hanks and Robert Downey Jr. for some reason, and then like a slew of random YouTubers that I've never heard of. But I do, you know. Apparently, I have a voice that sounds very similar to. I have a very common voice, apparently. Um, Mental complex. If you can have. A hinder scale in any metal or metal alloy besides the typical ones, what would it be? Now, Zerkatai. Uh, definitely. And I think... Scott, did you show me one that was made out of Zerkatai? Or was it just like a... Not not officially Zerkatai. It was just black Timascus. Or maybe it was regular Timascus. He showed me one one time and I was like... Oh, very cool. Yeah, Zerkatai is like my new favorite thing <laughs> i love i think circuit tight and there's two examples of it out on the table one is um the pocket clip on this guy it's 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 timascus with zirconium in it and then the other example is the uh bolster on the uh on the 520 here um but i love that material i think it looks fantastic so cool show off the mini tempest um so I said the Fief 20 was one of the greatest front flippers of all time. Bill, thanks for the donation. Shameless plug. Tempest Knives Mach 51 Kickstarter ends in six days. Been looking forward to your review. So check that out. Uh, Tempest Knives Mach 51 Kickstarter ends in six days. Thanks for that, that uh, donation. The, um, the Fief 20 here, I said, was one of the greatest front flippers of all time. Um, the Sharp by Design Mini Tempest is the greatest front flipper of all this, this the whole design is perfect like they just happened to also be an excellent front flipper they could this could have been a flipper it could have been a thumb stud opener right whatever this is so good and this is this is the knife nuts podcast edition with the purple fat carbon and the m398 uh long tanto 
Um, but yeah, holy, holy moly. Uh, the Sharp by Design um, Mini Tempest is so stupid excellent. It's just, it's unbelievable. Ratios perfected, maxed out on that knife. Every ratio that you could want to be perfect in a knife, that's got it. I so wish that blade shape was available on the others. I think a lot of people did. As far as I understand, there were 50. Um, that's, you got to, um, you know, definitely follow Knife Nuts Podcast on um, on Instagram. I'm also a part of their Patreon because I know that they they released some secret info there. <laughs> I'll tell you guys right now, um, Knife Nuts Podcast is a good Patreon to um, be a supporter of. Uh, they, uh, you get to see, you get to hear their podcast stuff early. You get to, um, see their YouTube stuff a little bit early. And anytime they are even thinking about doing a special run of something, they tell you about it there they, and you get early bird stuff. So I immediately, a long time ago was like, yup, that's absolutely worth it. Um, I'm very happy with all of my KNP edition or the stuff that I have managed to get my hands on. Thanks to Knife Nets podcast for sure. Uh, let's see. I did not get this. This this isn't mine, but somebody sent me an ovium, and uh, I very much like it. But uh, I do have my. I do have another. <laughs> I did buy another personal uh, 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 Herman though, and it'll be. It's coming down the road. Ah, uh, Mescuzzi. Let's see. What's my favorite knife? That's really hard to answer. Um, I can narrow it down to, like, I can narrow it down to three in my collection. Um, no, I can't. I can't. I can narrow it down to five in my collection. Um, now, you know what? Here, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I'll show you my favorite, my, I sh I'll show you four that are basically tied for different reasons, right? These four right here. The Shogaroff F3, I think, is probably the greatest knife design in existence, and I love it for that. The XM24 and full titanium here, I love it because, number one, it's a hinderer, and number two, this particular one is an XM24 Harpoon Spanto, which I never thought they'd do. And then somehow I managed to get a titanium scale for this guy. And I can't tell you, it was years that I waited for them to do this. The full time Mascus Herman, my first true like ultra premium custom. And then of course the Demco AD20 in full titanium is just like an ultra beast of, you know, if, if there was an apocalypse folding knife, which sounds hilarious. Um, but if there was an apocalypse folding knife, the AD20 in titanium is probably the most, you know, resilience knife that I've got in my collection. My favorite knife is the um, Sharp by Design Arch Nemesis. This is a full custom knife. This was a gift from my wife and is definitely like the ultimate knife in my collection. Um, for so many reasons, this this knife is just, it's spectacular. It's just such an incredible, and, and these are, you know, these are, they're hard to get. Um, they are expensive. And this one is everything that I love. Monochromatic textured titanium, uh, and it's uh, fully symmetrical. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. So yeah, the uh, the um, the Arch Nemesis is is my favorite knife. Sorry, putting a couple of those back because it's a little bit nerve wracking to have some. Let's switch out the. Let's put a dark horse here. Dark, the Dark Horse is also, that'd be like in the top six, the XM24 Dark Horse. Um, and we'll put this guy right here. There we go. Okay, anyways, let's see. Um, yeah, Kyle, you've got, yeah. Was it, was it, who sent me their arch nemesis? For, um, there, there will come a day where I will own another. Like, um, let me tell you this. If I ever drop serious money on another like mega custom, if I ever do that, if I'm ever to break my record for most spent on a knife, it will be on a like just absolutely ridiculous. Like, first of all, I'd have to convince 
Brian Nadeau to make me one. And he's like, there's already a million people beating on that guy's doors. Like he's, he's not just going to be like, sure, I'll just drop what I'm doing and do it. No. Um, that would be a task in and of itself. He's a great guy, but he's busy, right? He's not just going to drop what he's doing and make me a super custom. But let's say planets aligned, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Scott, it would probably be some type of Zerkatai arch. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. <laughs> some type of textured Zerkatai um, <laughs> arch nemesis. Probably with that amazing carbon fiber weave that he does on the blade. Yeah, that'd be that'd be it. It'd be a um I don't know if I'd do the whole body because that'd be way that'd be a lot of money. I don't know if I'd it'd be like titanium with a zircotai inlay and then the carbon fiber weave blade. And that would be far and away the most I've ever spent on a knife, right? Um that's assuming that it, it you know, <laughs> that he would, that he'd make me one, which is pro probably not. Um, let's see here. Uh, hey, 175 people in here. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me one week before we celebrate 80,000 subscribers. I mentioned, um, I mentioned earlier that I have a small knife collection to give away. Uh, valued at about $1,300. That'll be um, the celebratory giveaway package um, for my 80,000 subscriber celebration, which will be next Saturday. Mark your calendars, Saturday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What about the other time zones? I Just go to Google. <laughs> I don't know them by heart. I'm sorry. But yeah, um, that if that the whole event will be live. So if you want to enter, you'll have to show up to the live stream. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do like a video where there's an entry and then people can just like duck out on the live stream. No, I want I want it to be like a big event, a big fun live event, right? Hmm. Let's see here. I do wonder about sugar off availability. If there's sanctions on Russia... Sorry for being political. I've actually worried about that myself, too. It's okay. Uh, that's not... No, I mean, like, that. that's a general concern. Um, I don't know. You know? It's just... There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, I, I don't know. It might be something that we see. Who knows? Hello. Love to you and yours. That was just a really nice comment from Rocky uh, Cordova. Thank you. Really kind. Same to you. Thank you. McSquirgle. Thanks for donation. What are your thoughts on the Spyderco? Uh, is it Caribbean or Caribbean? <laughs> Hang, on. Hang on, let's do a poll. I, I, for some reason, I can't picture the knife, McSquirgle. I'm sorry. I appreciate your donation. Um, I, I, I <laughs> caramel. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna create a poll. Um, is it? I'm gonna pronounce. I'm gonna. I'm gonna type it out. Um, I'm gonna type. Hang on. <laughs> I, I. I'm gonna ask you guys on the pronunciation. Caribbean. <laughs> Care of bean. <laughs> it's carry bean. <laughs> Caribbean or Caribbean? Uh, I'm <laughs> yes is fifty percent so far. <laughs> it's both. Okay. Well, you can vote. There's a poll up. You can vote. <laughs> I can also pin comments now. Let's try this. I want to try this. Kyle, I'm going to pin one of your comments real quick. Kyle's message says it's both and is apparently pins now. I got a notification from YouTube saying you can pin comments now. 49%. Okay. I'm going to guess that it's both. Okay. <laughs> oh, it does pin. Oh, neat. It does. So I can pin. Okay. Yeah, let's play with this. Um, here we go. 
Uh, well, why can't I pin him? I can't. Do I have to undo Kyle's? Oh, unpin. Okay. And then here, somebody said pin me. So here we go. There you go. Your pins now. It should pop. It should pop up here. Um. Anyways, seventy-two votes, fifty-fifty. <laughs> that's kind of a neat. I'm sure there's. I think that's kind of a neat thing that I can pin certain comments because, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> this is kind of evil. <laughs> I like like Teen Bushcraft. I just I just put him up there because he said pin me, but. Whenever we get a, a mattress wizard in here, <laughs> it's, I can I can highlight um, whatever it is that they're saying for public scrutiny. <laughs> that's the best way to deal with that, right? I mean, that's, that's the perfect way. Is that's that's essentially a witch hunt. <laughs> it's what I created. But I mean, yeah, you know. Um, let's see here. People can't agree on anything these days now. I had so many people when I did the top. I'm glad you guys liked the top 50 greatest of all time pocket knife designs video. That video did very well. Glad you guys liked it. So many people were, were just furious with me. How dare you not include the Sabenza? How dare you? I don't really like the Sabenza. <laughs> Sorry. I like the Umnums on. And the, the next one in line would be the, the large Nkosi. And then way in the back would be the Sabenza. I'm just not really a fan of it. It's a good knife. Like, I mean, like, it's like if you buy one, oh, yeah, it's super high quality. It's going to last you a long time. But as far as, like, greatest knife designs ever, eh, eh, it's, you know, it's all right. If you own it and you love it, it's great. It's going to serve you for, you know, a long time. It's it's part of the, um, it's part of the uh, Holy Trinity. First name, last name. Thanks for donation. The Russ is designed so well for the price. Holy F. It is. The Russ. Just so we're clear, guys. Come on. My Apple, or not Apple, my Galaxy Watch thing is like, it's the Apple Watch app doesn't work right now. I'm like, I know. I don't care. This is the Russ, right? There's a pre-order up. It's uh, on the Grambu Knives. G-R-A-M-B-A. You can go to my most recent live stream, and it, I actually, I think I linked it. Oh, no. It's in the unboxing um playlist where I, I think the, the thumbnail just says, this is amazing. And this is Grand Blue Knives, the designer's out of Australia. Uh, he designed the Russ. And I just want to make this very clear. If you go to his website and you don't convert, it's going to look like this is a $380 knife. It's not. That's before you convert it to US. Like if you live in the US, you have to, you have to convert it, which you're given the option on the website. It's about 280 which is pretty um pretty good this is like one of the better i mean in this territory this is an incredible 280 dollars knife we have this it it actually is a frame lock this is part of the frame and then this textured piece of titanium is a separate piece an overlay or an over travel or a sort of it's it's kind of a weird bolster it's different than anything i've ever seen contoured Beautiful, just a fantastic work knife. Um, nice uh, see-through hardware, right? Just a couple of big see-through hardware pieces. Very good, very good. Um, Sabenza in 2035, updated the stop in. <laughs> we, have, we have updated the stop in $1,000, yeah. I mean, yeah, at the rate the inflation's going. Frame lock versus liner lock, I, I prefer liner lock because no matter how hard you squeeze it, you're not going to affect the lockup or the geometry. And also, you don't have to worry, like when you're deploying it, you don't have to worry, oh, am I putting too much pressure on the lock because it's not exposed. Uh, and arguably, it's about the same thing. You know why? Look at this. Look at my XM24. Wow, it's so thick. Look at all that potential surface contact. Oh, the relief cut is super thin no matter what the lock is it's only as strong as its relief cut like if you're going to put maximum force on this thing and force it to disengage my guess is the geometry will give before the relief cut but the relief cut is its weakest point so no matter how thick this part is the relief cut right it's still plenty strong i'm just saying like 
the relief cut on this guy or the the frame lock it yeah like the this area right here is that suit so, sorry the relief cut is almost the same you know it's just as thin as on the xm24 i it's just i don't I'm sure some micro arguments could be made, some hair splitting. I just prefer for overall convenience, functionality, longevity. I think the liner lock's better. I used to not think that way, but I do now. The best lock, in my opinion, hands down, is the shark lock, right? I know Cold Steel's coming out with their own thing, right? That's, I, I said this in another live stream. Uh, that's pretty shady. Just like what Cold Steel's doing. Like Demco creates the shark lock. And it's like the most amazing thing for the knife world. And all of a sudden, Cold Steel's like, oh, yeah, we actually have one of those, too. Super shady. Super shady. Especially, like, now we've got Demco kind of doing his own thing. <laughs> Man. That's a real, like, kind of boo from me. I, know, I, I try not to, you know, get too... But I, I felt I was kind of offended to hear that, <laughs> to be to be real. Um, let's see here. When are you gonna do another voice chat in Discord? We're all craving more Tater Field. Oh my god! <laughs> so I'll definitely do another one. Um, it's maybe maybe after the uh, eighty thousand subscriber giveaway. Um, <laughs> I've only done that a few times, but yeah, I'll I'll do that again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm just cringing thinking back to those. <laughs> oh man. Ugh, let's see here. Where did the scarab go? It's right. Oh, I put it back in the case. Here, I'll. Here. There's my the shadow scarab. Super cool knife. Unbelievably expensive, but very cool. You think the sumo is worth it? I think the sumo is overpriced, but it definitely is an amazing, super fidgety knife. I think the sumo is... I don't know. <laughs> I The sumo is definitely a super cool fidget knife. I just... My thoughts on the pricing of that thing are a lot different than they used to be. Um, I... I don't know. I don't know. It's like... I know that like every company has a certain percentage of outsource, like a lot of companies, I mean, unless it's like Rick Hinder or Medford or Chris Reeve, like that stuff is legitimately like all US. But, you know, there, there are definitely like a lot of people who, you know, like nothing against Kai USA, but it's like Kershaw, you know, it's like all USA for a hundred bucks. No, they, they, they don't actually say all USA. I mean, like, it's made in the United States, but do they have outsourced parts? Yes. Anybody who thinks that every last little tiny bit of those knives are made in the United States, no. Abs no. Uh, but, yeah, like, is it still a U.S. product? Well, sure. You know, like, if the majority, if, if the rule is that the majority of it has to be manufactured in the United States for it to be called U.S. made, well, sure. But there's, like, come on. Like, we see a lot of the same interchangeable parts. Don't tell me you've never seen the ZT0562 pivot on any other knife. Uh, let me give you a great example. The off-grid Scorpion. Don't believe me? Go look at it. <laughs> the off-grid Scorpion has the exact same pivot, right? Some of that stuff, some of the pieces, some of the parts are, are outsourced, right? Well, I can't remember what the heck we were talking about. Sorry, I was rambling. Um, not necessarily assembled. That would be like... Um, who is it? Who's the, uh, you know what? I've, I've danced around saying it. Um, Cobra, is it, is it, uh, Cobra tech and Raven something tactical? Is that the, somebody help me out. Is it, is it, it Cobra tech or Raven something or other? Um, they're the ones who are like USA. No, <laughs> No, no, you're getting your Legos shipped in and then you're putting them together in the USA. Like that's, and I, I've I've had to have discussions with people so many times, you know, it's like, okay, well, where's their factory? It's not. That's how they get away with the price. It's assembled in the USA. Ravencrest. Yeah, it's the same, same thing. Cobra Tech, Ravencrest. I've always edited myself, but I mean, you know. I just, sorry, I just, there's no, there's, I, no, 
it's it's uh they're, they're they're being sneaky and deceiving people i don't like it oh let's see what's on the far left oh this is the um brown LHCX. Is that a reference to the Large Hadron Collider? I think it is. If what I remember about this is um, Brown, is he a, is he an engineer? I think I think that's a reference to the Large Hadron Collider, or the the Scary Black Hole Machine, as some people refer to it. This is amazing. <laughs> this is an amazing knife. Um, let's see here. I, I don't know, Zero Malice. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know about... I know that Hoback is at least mostly made in the United States. I just don't know what... The, there's just... There's some weird indicators where I'm like, eh. Like with, like with Hinder and Chris Reeve and Medford, it's like, this is all clearly only being done by, you know, them, right? Like the Hinder stuff... Like this is all... Everything here. In fact, and I think Hinder is pretty open about it. Everything except for the individual ball bearings is made in-house. And, but, you know, Hinder has walked us through his factory and his new factory. He's so open about it, right? Same with Demco knives um, and, and Chris Reeve knives and Medford knives. Med, you can, you can, there are so many videos where Medford's like, yeah, this is where we make this screw. This is where we make this screw, Right. So there, there are companies who are like, nah, we're not going to show you, you know? So I'm not saying, I'm saying like, my guess is that Hoback has a few extra parts that are outsourced. No big deal. There's a lot of companies who do that. I don't think it's a problem that, that Kershaw has some stuff like that, right? I just don't know the percentage. I don't work for them. Just saying like, you know, take, take a look at the pivot on the 0562. It's the same pivot that's on the off-grid Scorpion. It's, it happens, right? It's it's the case. It, that's very different than Cobra Tech saying, yeah, it's made in the USA, when what they mean is actually all of this is made in China, and it's coming here in a pile of parts that we put together, you know, in wherever. So... Strong beater knives. Yeah. The be the uh, I've always maintained that the highest cost to durability ratio uh, is the, uh, it's the cold steel. I mean, there's a bunch of them, but the, um, oh my God, the SR1 light. Yeah, it's 8CR13 MOV and injection mold plastic. But seriously, it's a, a 190,000 wet, like it's a, thick wedge of steel you know, there's if you want to if you want a hammer slash pry bar slash knife right something that's nearly indestructible it almost doesn't matter what they make the blade out of at that point 60 bucks that's one of the most functional like the one of the best functional designs right or you know if you want to get a slicier you can get a slicier blade. I'd, I'd bump up and just pay for a cold steel um american lawman right but if you want like you know, best du cost to durability ratio is probably the SR1. Um, let's see here. My big thing moving into 2022 is I can't stand how some companies are not being transparent. There are too many of us that have been here too long and we know what those red flags look like. And we're going to tell everyone else, hey, this is kind of shady. Don't do that. We got companies, we got OEMs saying, you know, eh, we'll, 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 we'll work with you, but you can't tell anybody who we are because we, you know, we, we price things a certain way and we want to keep those prices high. If we're going to do something with you and price a little lower, you can't tell anybody who we are. That's bull crap. I, that, that really sucks. Then you got, you know, you got some smaller makers who hide um, like it's their decision to hide who the OEM is or, and they're doing that because they don't want people to know it's made in China. Tell people, tell us the people who are totally against it will not buy. And the people, right. It's the thing, people who don't have a problem with it. I mean, they might have a problem with it. The, the fact that you're trying to hide it, don't try to hide it. That's what I like about Grambo knives. They didn't, they didn't try to hide it. This is done by best deck. They said, yeah, it's done by best deck, right? That's how it should be. Just tell us where it's made. Don't try to hide it. We're going to find out. 
somebody will, right? And it never looks good when we have to dig it up. Sorry, I haven't been paying attention to chat. I've been ranting. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I'm reading some of your comments. Uh, try JK Design Folder, please. He's my favorite maker. Uh, JK, JK, why does it sound so familiar? Right. Here's the Say what you will about Microtech, but they didn't hide this at all. They put a giant golden dragon on the outside of the box and told everybody, this is made by Reich, right? They did. And a lot of people are like, okay, fa fair enough, but they had this big whole thing about we're always going to be U.S. made and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's a separate issue. But at least, at least when they did it, they told us. They didn't try to, well, we're having somebody else make it. And we'll leave you, we'll leave you to figure out where that is. No. They were like, it's made in China immediately, right? No hiding it. Hey MC, hope you've had a good week. Can we get some up close XM love? My shoulder is slowly getting better. Back on two wheels soon. Take care of me. Oh man. Hey, thanks for donation. I'm really I'm I'm it's I'm glad to hear that you're recovering. Um, I will do my best. Here, let me zoom in on this now that I know I can zoom in on a live stream. Oh, see, it's still kind of fuzzy, but I'll, I'll do the best that I can here. How about right there, right? It's still a little bit blurry. Sorry about that. Live stream stuff doesn't want to focus too well, but there's the uh, the XM24. There's the Monkey Edge Frag, the 3V, right? There we go. Nice. Sorry that it's a little bit, sorry that it's a little bit blurry. And then, of course, we have the Dark Horse with the uh, Steel Flame Crusader Nut there, and the um, Blackstone Wash DLC. Very cool. I hope that I hope that that will suffice. <laughs> Let me zoom back out. I think can I get all the way out? Live stream zoom is terrible. Oh my god. You suck. There we go. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Live stream zoom sucks. <laughs> it doesn't. Nothing works correctly. Okay, do you ever carry a Kapara anymore? I have the short one. I carry that every now and then, uh, the Blade Chops version. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, some of your comments I can't read out loud, but they're making me laugh. Uh, I love looking at wood grain. <laughs> Yeah, the background's gonna change soon. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm gonna go back to the gray carbon fiber. I think that'd be great. What time is it? What time is it? We got a little bit, guys. I gotta. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Give me like two minutes. Okay, sorry about that. This is an insane thing to think about, but <laughs> 10 people were like, I can't, I'm not waiting for it. <laughs> this is an insane thing to think about, but at, at the channel's current pace, let's say the pace doesn't change at all for the next nine months. I'm sorry, the pace doesn't change, uh, oh, excuse me, until September. This channel will hit 100,000 subscribers by September of 2022. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking crazy to think about. I um, I remember the 4,000 subscriber celebration. I remember when I was like, how on earth 
did I manage to accumulate 4,000, you know, followers on YouTube. That's so, that's so crazy. Um, just know that I very much appreciate each and every one of you. And I, I look forward to doing these live streams every week. Like it's fun to make content, but this is these little, like these hangouts are so much fun and it's such a big deal, um, to do these. So thank you, uh, sincerely. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's see. Let's hit that way faster. That'd be cool, you know? Um, but yeah, like if you're not, I don't know, there's 222 of you in here. Um, go, go check, make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> People tell me all the time, been watching you for years and I didn't know. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, that would, that would be cool. We're, uh, we're very close to 80,000. What's serious? Say, let's see. Sorry. Go back. 100,000 MC. You're going to be happy. I, you know, they send you a, an award, apparently. They, I, uh, <laughs> they send you a, YouTube sends you a little silver play button plaque. Like, they acknowledge that you exist, I guess. That's kind of neat. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 memory of growing the channel is much more important to me of course than the, the a physical plaque right but i guess what it represents is important so oh crazy i subbed <laughs> now you're my night on thanks man appreciate that kyle oh uh, let's see is ckf worth the money their prices are pretty high, and I think they're also open about that. They're very honest, like, hey, like, a, you know, most of the knife is made in Russia, but we do outsource a few things. So you're not quite getting Shiro quality, but you're getting almost Shiro pricing on some stuff. I think the best CKF knives are between 400 and 600. Once they start to climb above 600, a lot of those models, are, you're just like, eh. Like this one, for example, I bought this and I love it. This, the, the base version of this costs like 400 bucks. This one was 900. Do I feel like I got 500 more here with the Zerkatai bolsters and the liner lock? No, not really. <laughs> I feel like this is more like maybe 750. So it, it's pretty high, but the design is so good. And me personally, I just really wanted the Zerkatai. So that's one of those things where I, I'll overpay. I'm glad that they did a less expensive version, right? It's like if the only version they made was massively overpriced, it'd be like, come on, right? But they no, they made a reasonably priced version for like 400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> You might be right, uh, Copperlight underscore Steve. You might be right. Uh, wait, Kyle has a Zerkatai nemesis? You do? Oh, my God. Yeah, yes, I forgot. Yeah, duh. You told me about that. Oh, please. Yes, I do. I would very much like to see. That's going to be uh, kind of a scary knife to ship, though. Let's... Why don't you and I talk about that? Why I, I'd like to get some details on it before you, you know, before you risk sending that in the mail. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, let's let have a, let's have a talk about it. That just sounds like the god of knives, the Zerkatai arch nemesis. Just all of those syllables just sound wonderful. Zerkatai arch nemesis. <laughs> sounds spectacular. <laughs> Zerk frame and Zerkatai inlay. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. I have I know I've seen it before now that I think about it. I just there's so many knives that come in and out of my brain. God bless it. That is an incredible. <laughs> Man. Did I pick up one of the uh, Protect Terzuola collabs? No. And it's because the budget when that first they reached out to me and said, do you want to check this out? And I was like, I'm real tempted, but I've got my budgets dedicated to other things. And, you know, every now and then I overspend and I have to correct and it's stressful. I, I really have to stay within the parameters that are set by this channel month to month. But I, I do I do want to check one out. I would like to have one in for review. By the way, um, I'll let you guys know first. 
I am looking for new things for review. Um, I'm actually cutting it pretty close for unboxing content. So if you have something you'd like me to check out, you, you will get it back. Um, I generally have things for about eight weeks. You can email me at metalcomplex87 at gmail.com. I'm pretty much accepting, you know, anything like if it just looks interesting. I'll have my own list that I will post in the community tab here within the next week. But yeah, if you want to reach out, if you got something cool you want me to check out, metalcomplex87 at gmail.com. Do I own any fixed blades? I do. I don't know if you, I have a Becker BK2 in my truck. Um, I have uh, more robust over here. Um, I got a, um, I have a, I think it's Jacob Creates Chickadee, which is a cool little fixed blade. Little, which is like a little tiny fixed blade. Not, not too many. Let's see. You should do a short with every time you throw the car. Yeah, I, I'm working on that. So I had one built up that had like 70 fails and I accidentally deleted the file. So I'm building it back up again. It was so funny. It had all my, it like, cause sometimes I curse when I miss. And so I had to like bleep myself out. <laughs> I had like 70 of them and I deleted it and realized what I did. And I was like, no, I've been working on that for like half a year. Oh, no, you can't send me clones. I mean, it's okay, it's okay if you don't know, but I am aggressively anti-clone on this channel. And even if I'm doing content to make people aware, like, hey, this is what a clone looks like. All I'm really doing is promoting the clones and making people, aware, some people aware that they exist. And then those people will just rush out and buy them. So, no, anti-clone, sorry. But thank you. Thank you for offering. Did the Socom Bravo keep up the Microtech uh, quality? Do you know where the blade is heat-treated? Well, the blade is probably also heat-treated by Reich in China. And as far as I know, they do a good job. If you want to know about the quality of it, yeah. The quality of the Socom Bravo is off the charts. Reich does a really good job. That's one of those things where sometimes people hear China and they think automatically it's not as high quality as something made in the... No, this is it, this is really good. It's just one of those things that's hard for people to swallow. Um, some Chinese OEMs, like Reich and Bestec, and especially like Riot, can make really, really good stuff. It's, it's literally scary how good their manufacturing quality is. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily better all the time than U.S. manufacturing. I mean, you know, it's it's hard. Like, if you, you handle something like a Demco or a Hinder, that's like a really specific level of, you know, amazing quality, you know. We're lucky to have Rick Hinder knives and Demco knives and Chris Reeve knives, you know, some super high quality. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Riyadi, yeah. Uh, uh, remember, when, remember when we were all confused about how to pronounce Riyadh? We were calling it Riyadi or Riyadh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they, he, they teach heat treating in kindergarten over there. Oh, man. Let's see here. Sharp by design or spark, sharp by design? Spartan knives are great, but... Just, just so we're clear, sharp by, de sharp by design, like, as far as I'm concerned, as far as everything I've ever handled, Brian Nadeau is the, he's the best knife designer in the world. Um, and the quality is, it's un like, every time I handle a sharp by design, like, my, I, I start twitching, because my, br it's like, you know, asking an AI to divide by zero, I just don't know what to do with it. I'm like, how do I put into words how I'm feeling? I can't, you know? I start shorting out. Um, it's just really good. Did I get the latest package? I didn't check the PO box today, Scott, um, but if it shows that it's delivered, I'll, I'll go and check it tomorrow. I usually don't go there uh, on Saturdays. But I'll check. If it, oh God, if it's what I think you, did you get mine, Scott? Did you get my box? I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. 
I should send both my arch nemesis, and then you can be the only channel on YouTube to have three on screen at once. I'd be honored. Can you imagine? <laughs> three arch arch nemesi. Uh, that'd be super cool. <laughs> Sharp by design or M Tech Z Hunter. <laughs> oh man, that's a hold on now. <laughs> Sharp by design or M Tech Z Hunter. Unstoppable force versus immovable, immovable object. Hmm. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> my my full tie hinder. D listen, Rick Hinder is a genius, right? But if we're really gonna talk about like, like I just love the aesthetic of Hinder knives, and I think that Rick Hinder is an amazing innovator, and he's a pretty good knife designer, right? Like that, I think that's fair. Rick Hinder is an amazing innovator, right? You want to talk about overall knife design? That sharp by design, man. Like few who have handled any of Brian's work will will say no. <laughs> like most people are gonna go, yeah, this is really hard to beat. You know. All right, cool, Kyle. I might not. So right after the stream, that's generally like on Saturdays. That's when I like put the you know i put the kids to bed and it, it takes it's kind of a process right and then after that it's kind of like my wife and i have our own time where we're so i'm not usually immediately back on my phone but go ahead and send me a message and we will definitely talk about it arch nemesis in a word <laughs> probably not right probably not mm. i only got through one Gatorade, I can't, I can't have that. Hang on. Mm -mm. Let's at least open number two. Okay. <laughs> I can't read that out loud, Scott. I mean, like, I would high five them both at the same time if that, you know, that <laughs> sounds a lot less dangerous and nightmarish um let's see <laughs> favorite sharp by design on the table well there's only are there two? Oh, oh, oh it's i oh, see okay so my favorite up uh, between the two is still it's still this guy like this guy's a little bit bigger and it's got a flipper tab and you know but like this is like if you're saying you know if we're judging both of them on how, how good are the designs that they set out, like that Brian intended them to be, they're both perfect, right? I just like this design a little bit more, right? But they're two different knives. Like this one's a front flipper, right? But, and they both still manage to be doing their own thing. Like they have different lines, right? They even have different pocket clips. Brian's just really good about giving... Like, you can tell it's an SBD, but he gave each one a distinct personality. <laughs> Scott, sorry, man, couldn't resist. It's all right. It's okay, man. I've had, I've had much weirder things said to me on live streams before. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sharp design knives are very good looking. They are very handsome blades. And they still manage to be different than pretty much, pretty much everything else that's out there. Uh, la, 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 la. PW prices. Oh, hey, uh, thanks for popping in, man. Good to see you in here. Um, <laughs> gross. Um. <laughs> Do I have a knife on me when I work out? No, no, I don't. I I don't. I I have my um my uh, little ladybug knife on my keychain when I go to the gym, right? Like this is this is always on me, always, always, always. And this thing has been through it. This is K one ten, um, and <laughs> this is really a pit beat on, right? Um, but uh, no, I don't actually put one in my pocket. Um, up until now, I legit thought he was drinking Gatorade. I am, wink, wink. I am drinking Gatorade. 
carbonated Blah. Gatorade. Um, got my first buyer's choice book spot for a custom. Tice Mead, is that how you say that? This week. That's cool. Congratulations. Very nice. <laughs> what color then, huh? It's an amber color, <laughs> light amber colored Gatorade. This is a joke that I've made way too many times. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I lift weights with an, a spot I clip to the outside of my pants. That's what I do my dips with. I, I uh, When I do dips, I put a chain um, around my neck and at the bottom of the chain it, uh, attached to it is an Espada XL. It, it makes the uh, it makes the dips way harder. <laughs> I don't even use the bar on bench press. I just it's just the spot like on when on days when I max out, I just bench press the Espada XL for one rep. <laughs> that's that's all I do. Oh boy. I haven't speaking of bench I can't remember the last time I I need to redo that. Speaking of bench press. Jeffrey Hodges pre-order pre-ordered the Russ after your vid. Thank you for discovering that knife for me. How does it compare from that quick impressions to these knives? Like the knives on the table? Is that what you're asking, Jeffrey? Thanks for donation, by the way. Um, it's excellent. It's, it's very good. In fact, I, I told him, I said, I want one of these. Uh, I want, I want it to, I want it, uh, add it to my collection. There's nothing overly exotic about it. It's just a really, really good knife for the money. Like versus the competition out there, anybody who orders this is going to be real happy. And he told me, you know, he's, he's going to make it a hollow grind. And then he said in the future, he might do like a match. You know, it's textured on one side. He said he might match the texturing on the other. But this is everything you could want. It's got a good pocket clip. It's contoured, full titanium, M390. Great action, right? A fantastic detent. Um, and this is all covered. The frame lock is completely covered by this piece of titanium. It's just a good-looking, like, honest workhorse of a knife. Um, I'm just really happy with this, really excited about it. It's a good, like... This is one of those knives where it could be the last knife you ever own, right? Uh, the Russ. This could be anybody's final knife. Like if you just had one. I need to do a video about like knives that could be one and done. Like you buy it and then it's the last knife. I mean, which is funny. It's ironic. Like if you're watching my channel, you definitely ain't done, right? But I need to do like top 10 best one and done knives. Um, and this would be, this would be it. You could buy this and be happy forever. It's one of, it's just one of those knives, you know? Stasa23, what's up? Amazing channel. Before you do anything else, uh, subscribe to Stasa23. Awesome. How do you still have it in you to do a live after the, a spotted? <laughs> oh man. So like so much Gatorade, like that really helps, right? I'm just I'm I'm totally out. I'm just I'm just like on the floor, and then Gatorade. Right, cue the Popeye music after he eats the spinach, but it's me <laughs> with the like with just Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade's great for you after you work out. <laughs> um, in this case, it's actually kind of counterproductive, but you know you gotta hydrate. Sorry, is the irony thick enough? Are we? Did we get the joke? Okay, sorry. Um. Mm. Oh, uh, what's in the uh, the pocket uh, today? It is the rock wall, the thumb stud rock wall, which is really just fantastic knife. Um, really, uh, a lot of respect for the Tactile Turn and Tactile Knife Co. Company, which they're the same. Peeps, this is a good knife. Very, very good. <sighs> Guys. Guys. This is the last live stream before 80K. Um, I think you all are going to be super happy with the stuff that I picked out um, for the giveaway and the, the one knife that I bought that's extra uh, spectacular. 
Um, really excited. I will be um, really blowing up the ADK live stream on social media and in the community tab. Um, I'll be doing a um, prize reveal video in the middle of next week so you guys know what's coming. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm planning for, I don't think we're going to break any records next weekend, but I am planning for next week's live event to be a pretty big deal. So mark your calendars. That's going to be next Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, come hang out for a chance to win five awesome knives. Oops, did I give that away? Five awesome knives with a total value of over $1,300. You'll be winning a small collection, essentially an EDC rotation. Um, and if nothing else, just come hang out with us because I imagine the population will be quite a bit higher than it normally is, and those are always a good time. So 100K giveaway should be a Shiro. Yeah, the 100K giveaway is going to be insane. Um, but this weekend, this weekend's giveaway is definitely going to be one of the larger giveaways that I've done. Um, and uh, it just worked out really well. Um, very cool. And thanks, hey, thanks to, to the uh, 230 people who just decided to come hang out with me tonight. Very cool. Hey, Scott Anderson, welcome to Knights of the Round Knights. Raise your swords. All hail, Scott Anderson. Enjoy the badges and uh, exclusive Excalibur emojis. I forgot to mention that. Knights of the Round, of course, is still the first link in the description if you want to join. Supports the channel and you gain access to the badges and swords. Um, very cool. Thank you very much, Scott Anderson. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it. This was uh, this is exactly how I wanted tonight to go. Very fun, very laid back, good time. I think that's going to be it. I think I'm going to call it an evening. Hope you all um, have an excellent rest of your Saturday evening and an excellent rest of your weekend. Bye.